everyone. Jason Schapper here, M0A.com, alongside Matt, our online ground school manager, Russ, our director of maintenance, sitting in the back. Class D airport arrivals that we're talking about today. And for us, it always starts with listening to that ATIS. Contact, you have information, hotel. Hotel. Hotel Airport Information Hotel, time 1751, Zulu Weather. Wind 060 at 5, visibility 10. Sky conditions scattered at 3300. Temperature 32.23. Altimeter 300, zero letter. Visual approach only 36 in use. All VFR departures, advise ground control of your directional flight. Advise on this contact, you have information hotel. All right, information hotel. Now, when I call up, in this case, a class Delta airport, they prefer to be called, and some are, they'll vary in this, roughly 10 miles out. So we're going to call them 10 miles out. We're very lucky. We're due south in this case. But I am going to cold call first to get their attention because, as you can hear, they're busy. So let them finish this transmission here. Cessna 2, Romeo Charlie. Number 2, runway 36, clear to land. The wind is uh, 0204 now. Tower, 152, Romeo Charlie, number two, clear to land, runway 36. And now I'll sneak in my cold call here. Afternoon, Ocala Tower, Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu. Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu, Ocala Tower, good afternoon. 23, Mike Zulu's uh, 10 miles due south, information hotel for a full stop. Skyhawk 3, Mike Zulu, uh, make straight into runway 36, report a five mile final. Straight in, 36, call you in five miles, 23, Mike Zulu. All right, so we're going to call him in five miles, lining up for a beautiful straight in on runway 36. And Matt, if you wouldn't mind running me through a before landing checklist. Right. Oh, I got traffic right in front of me. Got traffic uh, 11 o'clock, 800 feet below you. Yeah, I see it. Yep. Uh, Matt, while we're gearing up and watching for that, uh, I see that traffic pass through. He's not talking to him, but we're still outside of their airspace. That's fine. Run me through a before landing checklist real quick, Matt. Sure. Uh, okay, the tower, five, one, gas, two, uh, fuel selectors, uh, uh, mixtures, full rich. Yep, got it. All lights are on. Yep, everything's good, and we're not clear to land yet, so we'll wait on that. Delta, Ocala Tower. Uh, yes, sir, I'm about uh, 8 of northwest of Ocala, so I'll be transitioning 3,500, about 5 west of the field, southbound. 5 west of the field. Delta, Roger, I'll tell you, 3008. Roger. And uh, Skok 72 Whiskey, one able to execute your climb out, contact Jack's approach. Get busy. Climbing out, contact and Jack, 72 Whiskey. A little bit of uh, rain coming from <laughs> who knows where. Jeez. Look good. So listen, we had one departing. We had one on base. We had that guy who wasn't talking. And we have one coming from the west. Russ, you have most of those on ADSB? Yes. All right. The one. Everything else is looking good. So we're going to give them a call. I'm seven miles out. We're going to wait just a little bit. Got all lights on. And Ocala is an interesting situation because Ocala does not have a radar. Uh, it's a visual tower. So they're literally using binoculars to uh, uh, to spot us. I'm thinking ahead of the airplane. I'll have some time getting ground tuned in here, thinking as to what's next, what's going to happen uh, with all that. So got all that passed through our little uh, sun shower here. Lined up real nice, started just kind of a gradual descent. And again, you've heard me say it a million times, the, the secret to a great landing is a great traffic pattern. What happens when I'm making a straight in like this? Well, I still want to be where I would be coming off base to final, let's say, at that same altitude, at that same airspeed. So making those same configurations in a way. Passing through six miles now. We'll give them a call here in just probably another 20 seconds or so. Everything's still looking good traffic-wise. I haven't hurt anybody in a bit, which always makes me nervous when there's that many other airplanes in the in the area here. Just keeping our head on a swivel. And we're looking good, and we're going to go ahead and give them a call now, five miles. And Ocala Tower, 2-3, Mike Zulu's five miles. Scott 2-3, Mike Zulu, runway 36, clear to land, wind 3606. 36 clear land, thank you. 2 3 Mike Zulu. Now, notice too, he gave us the winds. I'm just. 1 5 2 Romeo Charlie, uh, turn right. I'm just required to read back the important yeah. stuff, right? The specific runway. Verbiage like, I'm clear to land. Yeah, I appreciate him giving me the winds in this case, but it's not necessary to read it back in this case. And you know what? Let's say maybe my mind was just thinking so much on, 
on Landon 3-6 and reading that back right. I'll get on a short final here and I'll ask him for what's called a wind check. And he can just simply give us a wind check as well. We'll get a little bit closer there to do that. But I'm going to start slowing myself on down, start configuring this on out, bringing on my car, Pete, bringing some power back, and I'm going to go ahead and give us 10 degrees of flaps. Just getting the airplane configured nice and early. A straight in is a very tough approach to make. We're so used to just flying in the traffic pattern. This is why it's going to benefit you flying in the towered airfields. They're going to have you enter on a right down one, on a right base, make a straight in. All these different types of approaches that you normally just don't get to make at pilot-controlled airports. Now, we've already heard the magic words, we're clear to land. The other aircraft was told to turn off, which it looks like he's turned off. And uh, the other one departed, the other one never said a word. So I think it is just us right now. Everything's looking good here on about uh, just, uh, just a little bit less than a three mile final too. And coming in too, starting to, we're spoiled because we have GPS, but have you ever wondered what does a three mile final look like? Well remember this is three miles probably from the, from the center of the airport. So you have to look and kind of judge what does, okay this is probably more like a two and a half mile final then. Approaching now a two mile final. What does that sight picture look like as well? Because without Ocala Tower having a radar, you have to kind of make those judgments, assuming you don't have GPS on board, to let them know how far you are from the airport. So, just to be a benefit to them as well. So we're gonna get a little bit closer. I'll ask for that wind check here. I gotta slow this old girl on down just a little bit. Bringing it on in, everything's looking good. And I'm gonna tell them, I don't know, don't have to say their name, don't have to say my name, just have to ask for it. Wind check, please. Wind uh, zero three zero at eight. I can give him a double tap to let him know I heard that. So zero three zero at eight. I'm landing three six. So in that you glance down real quick. Go okay. That makes sense. I can feel the wind coming this way while I'm getting blown that direction here. I'm power back to idle here, putting in just enough flaps to make the crosswind work. About twenty degrees coming on in. A little bit faster than I want to be, but again, I'm using less flaps. I'm going to float a little bit, but I have 8,000 feet of runway in this case. I don't mind in a decent little crosswind, you know, 30 degrees off the runway and eight knots coming in. And if I'm looking at that windsock, Matt, I think you'd agree it's a little more than 030. Zero, zero. Yeah. I don't mind being a little bit faster when I have the runway to give. Pardon me, Matt, sorry. And we'll just hold it on off here, hold it on off, touch that. Oh, maybe there's not as much wind as I thought. I tried to put that right wheel down, but there goes the right wheel, then the left wheel followed by the nose, just like that. Now we wait a second here and see how he wants us to contact ground, go with him. Let's find out together here in just a second. As I'm told, and you're instructed to get off the first available within uh, within means, not not rushing off or anything like that. This is your runway till you're done with it here. Scope 2 three, Mike Zulu, turn right Alpha 6, and you can taxi the Alpha back to the uh, T-hangers, just monitor ground point four. Alpha 6, Alpha to the T-hangers and monitor ground point for 2-3 Mike Zulu. So we're told to monitor ground. Let's uh, let's clean up the airplane here first. Okay, Carpet's coming off. You can confirm this on checklist with me, Matt. Flaps coming down. up. Mixture leaning out. Pass the whole short line. Everything's good. And he said, to my hangar, monitor ground point four. Meaning, I don't have to contact them. I'm told to monitor ground. Now, what does it mean when he says point four? Sometimes I'll say ground point niner. Most, when I say most, 99% of ground frequencies are 121 point something. So when they say ground point four, he means 121.4. Ground point nine or 121.9, which is actually the most popular ground frequency, so he told me that. But he said, Alpha 6, Alpha to the North Tee Hangers, they, we're, we're local, so they know where we're going and just monitor ground. So I'm just listening to ground, not to say anything in this case. So something a little different for you. I know it's intimidating sometimes flying into a towered airport, but you're just having a conversation. Who you are, you know, where you are, and what do you want to do? You have to answer those questions and think ahead of the airplane. Have that taxiway diagram out. That's why it's nice having these guys. Have the next frequencies ready. Use CRM if you're able to and working with a crew. But listen, I can't wait to read your comments below this video on Facebook, on YouTube, on M08.com. Enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you.